us out. <laughs> it's still going. Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. Josh here. Yeah. Yes. Woo. Woo. So yes, massive welcome uh, to Josh Scott from JHS Pedals who's joining us today. We're going to have a chat about all things. It's great to be here. <laughs> I just wanted to start it off. Well, I guess we can have that as a, a retrospective, um, or at least a uh, anticipatory honk for Ryan Adams. Oh, yes. okay, very good. Uh, I was fumbling my way around a bit of Ryan Adams in the uh, ooh, misses uh, in the <laughs> in the intro. <laughs> but before we get started with the artists and the pedals, I just want to touch on a bit of your background and, and history yeah one of the things that I thought was fascinating we we're talking yesterday about the Keeley modded blues driver mm -hmm. and that's where it all started for you right yeah it all started there and JHS is 10 years in which is wild we were we were Amazing. talking we're driving through the countryside and there's hobbits everywhere and we're talking and drop to Oxford was... yeah um, but yeah 10 years in so it all really started Around 07, um, I always used two of Robert's uh, blues drivers. I'd stack them. Oh, you want to do the... Uh... Yeah. Oh, let's give him a... <laughs> I'd use two of his uh, blues drivers and an old, like, Marshall blues breaker usually. And I'd stage them. And one day, one of them just stopped turning on. Mm -hmm. And um, I got into it. Realized this is a momentary switch. I fixed it. And then I felt really amazing about fixing it. You know, it was like nothing to fix. It wasn't a huge issue, but it really sparked my curiosity. So then I, you know, that led into this thought of why does this blues driver sound so much better? Mm. Um, and that led to me in a notebook and opening a blues driver next to another blues driver I had. I think I had like four that I love the pedal, always have. And I'd be like, why did he change this thing that's red? I didn't even know what a capacitor was. I didn't know anything. And I'd be like, why did he change this? What are the numbers on it? So I'd be like, I'd write it down, write the other one. And just going through that and figuring out, like, you know, hacking through it. Just kind of teaching. That was my watch. That's your watch. Is oh, I see. It's my wife. She says she loves me. Uh... So how do you go from, how do you go from that uh, fixing one pedal to then going, you know what, I think I might build some pedals. Yeah, yeah, it's a slow, painful journey. Um, the first things I did were, you know, modding boss pedals like DS1s and blues drivers. Eventually I learned, I taught myself to read schematics, you know. I started with boss stuff because mm. it. I've always loved it. And still to this day, I think it's some of the best stuff ever made. And I just learned you know, what does this first capacitor do in a circuit? And it's all, it's like cooking, you know, I just mm. kept learning little recipes. How old were you around this point? I was nine years old. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was 24. 24. I was 24, so, and I'm 74 now, yeah. but it was 10 years so ago. So it's been a short a It's short been trip. really short. But had you, you know, so when you were a kid, were you pulling um, things yes, apart? Yes, I was is that, always, is that my, yeah, breaking my dad's lanterns and stuff. You know, I was that kid. Um, and I I have always been, uh, so I got really into basketball because I'm frequently tall. And I felt like I could jo dominate. Josh is unusually tall. Should we demonstrate yeah. that? <laughs> Check it out. Look, right off you the top of the screen. Awesome. I'm good. I'm good. He's I'm good. just, I'm sure? just, you know. Yeah, yeah. So Dan was actually stood up there, by the way. <laughs> he is standing right now. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've always been very one-track minded. I get into something, I'm obsessed with it, and that's that's you know I'm only I can only do one thing. I have limited mental capacity, you hmm. know. And uh, so yeah, when I got into it, I just got obsessed with it, and yeah, I just kept going through the processes of what does each little part do reading some books go to the you know i'd buy get on and buy like some college textbooks like i'm a huge i still go through i try to go through like an electronic small signal engineering book every year uh you know there's just dudes i've learned from with that That's and then amazing. as as i've gotten 10 years in you know i met robert like robert keely about four years ago guys like him guys like you know the pedal community is a really tight-knit friendly community for the most part mm. and a lot of help has just come from these older guys that just love it you know so mm. robert gets a kick out of hearing that this 
punk kid opened his blues driver and now is a competitor of sorts but like we've done steak and eggs together he helped with the vcr mm -hmm. he's helped with so he's helping me with another project um so there's like a cool camaraderie and all that and my thing is just learning what i'm good at uh two or three things and what i what i really suck at i just you know get a team around me and keep learning it's a constant learning mm -hmm. um, but i am a total hack there's broken pedals everywhere <laughs> There's, you know, I breadboard a circuit. I'm getting a lot better, uh, but I have an, uh, an engineer, an in-house engineer with me, and then I'll hand him over my plate of spaghetti, like I told you, just look, yeah. and then like my five sheets of like scribbled paper, and I'm like, ah, and hand it over. And I make him clean it up and stuff because there's just parts of it that my brain just melts when I try mm -hmm. to do it. So, yeah, it's just a constant learning, a constant teaching myself how to do stuff. Um, I'm getting frustrated of, all the time. There's a couple of notable things in there. So you, you are a self-taught engineer. Yeah, it's I gone mean, from saying engineer is out there. But well, yes, okay. yes, I get the const. I, sure. Yeah, learning. One so, day I hope just someone will look at me and say, you're an engineer. So 10 yeah. years ago, you fixed a foot switch on a broken yeah. loose driver. Now you've designed a, like a, the... Um, we, well, unfortunately, we don't have one here, which is the, the Panther Cub, which is a tap tempo analog delay. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That's amazing. This The switching that you designed in the new, in the muffletter is yeah. so Well, that's another good clever. example, too, of getting, so John Cusack helped yeah. with some, like, right. getting, getting guys around you that, like, doing your part and then getting guys around you that are smarter that have a group that want to be involved mm. and that's how it's that collaborative thing of like i'm good at this mm. and i'm going to find guys who are excellent at these other things and like just doing it together mm. has really paid off yeah awesome the yeah. switching that dan's going on about is yeah, the, a, uh, the way it switches through the different um muff style circuits yeah mm -hmm. yeah so, so that's hard to do yeah as you turn this it is a it's a it's a railway a microprocessor essentially says when you turn this hey here's a big muff pedal and there's these different values through the iterations but it says change the tracks so as you change it you're actually changing multiple sections at one time mm. and so yeah it, it's amazing yeah so it's a constant learning and a constant evolving and like i was telling you yesterday we just completed the 500 series that stuff's like a crazy other ballpark just so, and that actually caused new versions of pedals like the pulp and pill compressor the right. v4 mm -hmm. some of these pedals like came back to life because as we were incorporating them into like a studio like a higher grade world we realized like or i would realize when i did that five six years ago i was really stupid <laughs> you know and it's kind of and that's the fun it's like a, sure. a constant learning yeah that's awesome 500 series for anyone who doesn't know is kind of a modular studio thing about that big that tall yeah is it half rack is that how yeah, they're well, well. They're upright. Yeah, well, they're kind of upright. Yeah, it's like a you just slide them in. They, they make me think of like PCI, like module, like a sound yeah. card, like an right. old PC. But designed specifically for recording yeah. rather yeah. than guitar pedals. So it took a lot of these the basic topologies of some of the circuits people had been hacking in the studio use and redesigned them from the ground up, considering every instrument. So like the Colorbox Five Hundred is just fantastic. I mean. Out okay. of the park on drums and everything. And so let's talk about that then. Because yeah. this is, um, when we first started looking into your pedals, actually one of the first pedals that we saw of yours was the, um, our dear friend Andy Timmons. Yeah. If you want to... Uh... <laughs> uh, so we were doing a, um, a shoot with Andy and it's just, you know, yeah. here's the story. It was a thing for Anderson's. And they picked up a Mesa Boogie. Okay. And because that's his sound, he has the Lone Star and he has swaps between the clean and the overdrive channel. Yeah. And for whatever reason, the overdrive channel on this amplifier wasn't working. And so they had to go and shoot this thing. They didn't know what, was, what you know what to do. And whether I think it was Lee that said, "Oh, we've got this. Try it out." I never awesome. knew this. Yeah. And it was the V1. I better give the cap a honk as well. Yeah. <laughs> It was the um, it was the first version which we have here. Um, the first version. Oh, there's a lot of getting up today, Dan. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Oh man, can't lot, really. Can't lots really of getting up. That's the one. That's the one. So 
Yeah, the, was this, the, the older first, version. Yep, the first version, Angry Charlie. And you've since done the Andy Timmons um, signature series. Yeah, based around that. Based and then around a newer that. Angry Charlie with a full tone stack. Right, yeah. Yeah. yeah Which the, is yeah, up there yeah, as well. That, yeah. I do believe we've made a video on that, on yeah. one of those pedals. Sweet. So this was our first introduction to JHS. Okay. And we were like, you know, and then we did um, a video specifically, because after hearing Andy play through that, my yeah. mind was blown. Um, so we did a video on that, and instantly we were like, we were hooked. We thought these things are amazing. Awesome. So, but they are, in a sense, you know, overdrive pedals, um, and they, they sound awesome, but when this came out, the color box, this was something I'd not seen before. Yeah. So we, take us through this. We yeah. even made a video called something like, What is it? What is <laughs> No, that, I think that summarizes the feeling of doing it. So, yeah, it was like 2012-ish. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. It was somewhere right in there. And it's like, the further you get into doing a pedal company in this day and age, it's like, we were having this talk yesterday, like, do we really need another overdrive? Let's be honest. I don't think we do, but I'm going to keep doing them. People want them, mm. but needing is like, do you need it? There's so many great pedals. I mean, just yeah. our friends alone. Like if you were to look at like friends that have like Earthquake or Robert or Brian Wampler, I mean, there's so, so many, no, just so like, many. It's like the golden age. Yep, it really is. And it so, really is. Yeah, and so it was like, it became slightly annoying to me internally, just like, I, I just want to do something really unique. Um, because I love replicating old stuff, or I love tweaking things, but it was like, can we do something really different? And so my background prior to accidentally fixing pedals and you know I told you do session guitar work and stuff back in the day and some touring but I was a studio engineer a lot I did a lot of studio engineering and producing and so I love I love Neve stuff mm. and API and SSL and, and there's like some element of like to me it's like this classy feeling of like pro audio I don't know what it is it's a little more snobby than guitar you know it's <laughs> like it's like the next level of like well I have an SSL yeah it's you so know true. it's like a different feeling so, and I'm a, my, one of my favorite guitar sounds ever. So one of my favorite bands is Spoon. And they have a record called Give Me Fiction. And so Britt will take, he'll just take his guitar and just plug it into desks, like right into Neves. You know, mm -hmm. Wilco does this, Jeff Tweedy does, yeah. right into the sidecar. Uh, Beatles' White Album, obviously, is possibly some of the first things maybe we all heard of that. And so I just started thinking about, I've never heard anyone do that live really well. I mean, I've heard people plug in a tone bender and dime out the tone and do something great, but I never really heard a guitar amp that sounded like there was no speaker, which is crazy because it's the opposite. It's like, how can I make my amp sound horrible? Right. Because it's actually kind of, I mean, we all, like, there's so many amps in here and you can tweak all day and say, I don't like this amp, but can you make an amp sound like it's absolutely not an amp? Right. It's the worst idea ever. <laughs> is it? Is that the worst idea you've ever heard? Okay, that was I the, don't know. So that was the <laughs> Let's first. Let's go with it. That was the first. That was the initial. How can I make this expensive night? For me, it's like probably a 65 basement or mm. some 50 watt amp that's clean and beautiful. I want it to sound like complete trash. Right. How can I do that? So it was. It really started with let's think about. Abby Rose, think about Beatles records. Let's think about how Brit's doing it and Jimmy, you know, how these guys are doing that spoon and Wilco. And so started playing with the Neve 1073 circuitry. Um, and basically it is two Neve 1073s that are in series. So if you picture, you know, people stack overdrives, mm -hmm. well, you're essentially stacking two mic preamp gain stages. And as you turn the little step knob here, people get confused with this, but you're actually raising them together in perfect db oh okay and so and then the pre-volume is the fine trim of that right so you're destroying the second one with the first one every time okay and by the time you get to five it's just like which is what we wanted 
But let's have a listen. Yeah. Let's have a listen. She, and so, she, you, uh, so you end up with the EQ on it, and it kind of just rabbit trailed into it. It was originally what the crayon is now. That was the concept. So yep, have you seen right. the crayon? Yes. Yep. So if you yeah, see yeah. the crayon, that was the first thought. But then this happened. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So Dan and I have, have um, had a play with the color box a couple times, mm -hmm. once almost two years ago. Yep. And then in a video very recently that may well come out before this one, we don't know. So. We got the guy who designed it here. Come on, then. what do we do? So, you need to play your guitar. So we have it on uh, a lower step here. So, yeah, like Geyser, it's a good preamp kind of. So it, it, uh. does, it does a huge amount of tone shaping, and the EQ is really great. That's insane. Like, it's totally useless, but it's there. And you, you have, you know, you can have a twin reverb and get voxish sounds, and you can make mm. a vox sound more fendery, and and that all comes into play when you step up here. So. You can hear at that point the one stage is hitting the other. So it's an all discrete, studio grade preamp going up and up and then when you go you're on step five just I'm gonna max I'm just gonna get crazy can I get crazy <laughs> so. so crazy you just can't go any further you know there's no more gain to get Yeah, and then you have a like a high pass from 60 to 800 because I want to have a horrible guitar sound and I want it to sound like an AM radio. <laughs> <laughs> so I take my $4,000 amp and make it <laughs> sound like trash. But it's the coolest trash sound ever. There's yeah, something yeah. very rock and roll about it. When, when did you hire a marketing person? <laughs> you know, I, I don't know yet. I gotta... <laughs> and so XLR in and out. Mm -hmm. uh, so this, and then this pedal caused me to do the 500s because it just ended up on everything. There's huge records, people singing through it, printing their master tracks through it, drummers using it, keyboard players, people bouncing their drum loops, and it just became this really cool, let's buy this pedal and it does everything. One of the absolute best bass pre's ever too. Oh wow. Oh, it's just phenomenal. And then it's a direct box, so. It's, it just turned into this wild thing. I remember, so, you know, back to the idea, it was like, I wanna do this thing and, and nobody got it. I mean, I just remember like, people staring at me in the shop because there's a lot of work and I just kept going with it and I kind of felt like I'd walk around and people would be like he's messing with that thing again <laughs> you know I felt like yeah so and then, and here we are so it worked out and it's mm. it's it's made it into some crazy rigs that's just it's really cool it's a really fun story and I'm just really fortunate people want to pedal that does way too much stuff mm. it's slightly confusing it makes your amp sound horrible or really good. <laughs> so there's a lot of, I'm just glad people got into it. Well, I think it's important because on, on the one one half of the guitar playing world, everyone just wants a nice overdrive they can plug into and it sounds full and fat and easy and they don't mm. have to think too much about it. That would probably be me. And then the other half of the world's like, yeah, I don't want that. I, I want something different. Mm. I don't want that because that guy over there's using it. Well, yeah. No. Yeah. And, and sure. no, the video that we've made that has this in it and some other um, non, we call it kind of non chippy overdrives because it's achieving it in a completely different way, compares some of those different sounds. Mm. It sounded mega with the telly. Yeah. Just just pushing yeah. the amp. Yeah. yeah. There's something about the, the transients from this that is completely different. It is it. way different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a very controllable, uncontrollable pedal. Sure. It like has a feeling of chaos mm. because it does so many different things. And but you can tweak it sort of yeah, endlessly. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. It's really fun. And every awesome. guitar is drastically different. Mm. Okay, right. Before we... I want to talk about the kilt in yes. a sec. Because how long have we had that? And there's a guy 
who watches the show, hello, sorry, your name escapes me, but every week for... Johnny Kiltman. For about almost a year, the comment was, guilt! Question mark. Well, that would have been an exclamation mark, but anyway, we'll come on to that. Yeah. Before we get there, so there you, there you are, you've uh, modded your first few pedals, you've decided to build a few pedals. Mm -hmm. How does it then go? Because building a few pedals and selling them is so radically different than running a modern company. Yeah. How was that transition? And I guess we could be talking for eight hours here, so. <laughs> um, really, really, yeah. This, I love the discussion that we had, because I was like, how'd you start your company? <laughs> yeah, sure. And he was like, we just, we shared. We shared At pain. one point, yeah. we were driving down the road, holding hands, crying. <laughs> it was, it was beautiful. Where all the little yellow flowers are, we pulled over, there's a cathedral, and we were weeping. It was, it was gorgeous. No, there, <laughs> there really is, there really is an element of like, I went through that, and like, would I yeah. do it again? I mean, it's just like, I knew nothing about business. I still don't know a lot about business, and I knew nothing about designing pedals. I still don't know a lot. I mean, the amount of stuff I don't know how to do is crazy, and I look back over 10 years, and I just, I'm just so fortunate that I'm literally sitting here with a job and employing 20-plus employees and making stuff in my hometown. And So all that said, like, how do you get there? It's like so many mistakes and so many wrong, bad ideas, so many color boxes you never saw that was like horrible ideas, wastes of money and, like, not knowing I had to pay taxes, I was telling you this morning. Just what idiot doesn't know you pay tax? Me. I know. I know a couple. <laughs> so it, yeah, the process becomes so for me is a very natural thing. Um, mm -hmm. Mod this pedal because that was that was very easy to perceive. One change did something. So I realized like C one on this pedal, the capacitor. It's the first capacitor. It sets the frequency range. So. It made it more bassy or less bassy. That was like literally step one was like this thing changes. For me as a guitar player, bassy more bassy. Like mm -hmm. that's the most technical bassy more bassy. You know, and then you get into understanding how active passive tone controls work, or what does an op amp actually do, and how many different ways can I use it? It's like someone's baking a cake, and they they need to know the five different ways you can do this one part of a cake or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so it's just continually learning. And then on the business side, for me. It is 100% about having a team around me that's really good at everything I'm bad at. So, you know, huge shout out to my team back home. Just people that do do everything so well, so passionately, so that I can do like the two or three things my brain wants to do and I have, you know, passion about doing. So, it's just a long, painful journey of failure. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine that... Um... <clears throat> As the company grows, you get to kind of plateaus where you've got to make a big decision to to move on again. Does it yeah. work like that, or is it more organic? Yeah, I think, and one of, and some of those plateaus, I think, if I'm not excited about what I'm doing, then it's going to not be fun. And I think things like a color box, like me just saying, like, I'm going to do something original, mm -hmm. you know? There's a lot of guys doing great original stuff. But most pedals, you know, and they're all very similar topologies, and you can't, you can only turn on a transistor so many ways. You can mm -hmm. only, an op amp works so many different ways. There's so many ways to do a tone control, and we all use those recipes, and that's a beautiful thing, but it was like, so we're constantly pushing, you know, whether it's a Panther Cub that's analog delay with tap, or like a unicorn, like a, a real bulb driven photo cell univibe with tap tempo just mm, amazing and sometimes it feels a little reachy like maybe it's just doing it to do it but yeah it's like i just want to do something that feels exciting mm. and i think that's what's led us into some really cool places and some really weird ones like where you step back and go that was a bad idea but we did it and you know so right come on then dan so bring us into the kilt okay so um put one on Actually, because uh, yeah, I do have a question about this. Okay. I I don't know uh, Stu's Scottish heritage. However, Al, we have a mutual friend, Stu G. Mm -hmm. um, English I, heritage. In he might be highly offended by <laughs> that. English kill? Is there such a thing as an English kill? Don't even go there. All right. So Scotland, Scotland has already sent eighteen Scud missiles <laughs> to this to this <laughs> building. <laughs> Sturgeon's on their way down here. <laughs> you get out! 
there you have it, folks. <laughs> so, Stu G. Yeah, Sturgeon's uh, gone back. Sturgeon's gone back. Uh, and so Stu sent me this. Mm-hmm. It was so cool that it hooked up with you. So how did that happen? Yeah, so I've been a fan as well. Uh, and I met... I can't remember where, and it was some Nashville. He moved to Franklin, Tennessee, like Tennessee, Franklin, Tennessee. He moved to Nashville, and I met him. I think at like one of those amp shows where you run out of hotel and it's every room is. Yep. A, yeah, they're yep. crazy. You ever been to one? No. Madness. Right. Madness. Okay, so he like, I think I got a hold of him, and basically he stopped by, hung out, and we just talking and then one day he's like you know i've always used the x pandora but i love it and hate it and so it was like how could i remove the hate okay that was that's what this is so right. yeah x pandora topology with some tweaks an added boost stage over here mm-hmm. it's a true two-in-one you can choose the order of the toggle the g1 and g2 are the the resistance within the the gain staging, Mm -hmm. a low cut because if Stu's using like, he might be using his park combo or whatever, Mm -hmm. or he might be using a 412 Marshall and depending on sessions and things. And it's just Stu's ultimate, this is what I want a tri-pedal to do. Yeah, it was was just tweak it to how he wants it. Is crazy. It's amazing. You can be a strat guy that's like just wanting some vibe and like bluesy strat stuff, all the way to gated chaos mm. fuzz. So you say it uses the, or, you know, it's based yeah. off, starts with the X Pandora mm-hmm. uh, topology. What is that? Is that a transistor? The X Pandora is super bizarre. Like when it comes to how a drive pedal works, it's really unique. It essentially has a compression circuit within how it distorts. Right. So it's really unique. And you know, on a lot of pedals you see, you change toggles and it's clipping diodes. Mm -hmm. Well, when you change these toggles, you're actually changing resistance and how it clips within this compression circuit. And it's very cool, very different. You know, it's not your typical screamer or this kind of fuzz or that. It's, Mm. I would, you know, it almost has this rat esque vibe but it's mm-hmm. different and it has this compression like touchability to it i'm trying to think of other buzzwords yeah come on more adjectives. like you know it's very yeah. transparent the ice picky highs are smoothed out <laughs> yeah um, it great. has haunting mids haunting the low end is nice and rounded and it, tight it's still. very nice very nice it's tight yeah crisp i would say crisp <laughs> it covers the bases yeah it does. And again, it literally does every drive sound <laughs> on earth. Yeah. We're going to quit more. making and, everything. And more I heard, haven't heard yet. I heard that with yeah, JHS yeah. is shutting everything else down. And we're focusing on the kilt. You have a new kilt coming out, though. Possibly. Yeah. Possibly. I'm not allowed to say that. You can say anything you want to say. I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> but it's possible. 
it's kind of it's come together quite nicely, Dan. We did a bit of talking, bit of playing, bit of talking, bit of playing, mm -hmm. and now it's time to do more talking. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, but it fits nicely, you see, because now we're talking about the future and what's future. coming. And look how this all falls together because we've got new pedals. You know, I'm in my own future. I'm here in the UK, mm. and I'm six hours ahead of myself. You thought about this? So six hours ago, you were going, what pedal are we going to make in the next six hours? And it was this If one. I was back home, I would be here, but six hours ago. So that point that you were confused back home six hours ago, you can now I'm text clear. yourself My with the mind is totally awesome. clear and transparent. Perfect. Warm. <laughs> Cold. Round. <laughs> Right, so I'm excited. VCR. Yeah, VCR. For anyone who hasn't guessed, I'm a massive Ryan Adams fan. Actually, he can legitimately honk the uh, the horn there, of course. Yes. How did that come about? A little bit jealous. I really want to hear about this. Ryan. Can we get us tickets? Ryan is... What an, does he smell like? He is... He's wonderful. He smells wonderful, I guess. So you haven't accidentally snipped him when you're going There's into the hug? No, no, no. And I'm tall. I've done that before. Basically, yeah. anyone I hug is at danger. <laughs> They're totally susceptible. That's the word. They're susceptible to elbows in the face, knees in the face. It depends. Yeah. It depends on where I'm at. Have you ever met Kelly from the Stereophonics? No. Because he's actually about four foot eight. I would kill him. I, <laughs> I, I feel like he would just die. <laughs> So, Ryan, yeah, Ryan's a great guy. I, with Ryan, it was, you know, you run into somebody, you meet somebody, you cross paths. And I'm, I've been a huge Ryan Adams fan for several, not, I had to go backwards in his catalog. It's ridiculous. Mm. He has like 150 albums. That's They're all amazing. amazing. Yeah, amazing. it's like he just, it's insane. So, I got into Ryan Adams big time, probably you know, six years ago or something, the Follow the Lights EP. And been a huge fan of Cross Paths. Uh, you know, just kind of hung out with him once. Went by Pac Sam, um, which is his studio there in Hollywood. I got to know Charlie, his, like, engineer sidekick. And, uh, yeah, just conversation started. What what would Ryan want to do if, if a pedal came about? He's, he's a huge gear guy. I mean, he has... Just shelves of pedals, shelves of gear. He's always collecting. He's like constantly on reverb. He just loves gear. And so, yeah, and his pedal board keeps getting bigger and bigger. And so he's a singer-songwriter, very rock and roll, though. He's, he's totally gone more rock and roll in his live shows. Mm. And it, and he's pedal dancing a lot. You know, he's mm. singing, and he'll have his Strat or whatever. And he's always like, dun-dun-dun. Usually it's about three pedals to achieve a sound. And so the premise of this was there is a primary Ryan Adams sound that's great. And it is a sound that is very much, in his words, the Smiths or the Cure. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. And he loves, you know, huge Smiths fan. And so reverb, like hall reverb, he hates spring reverb. He's like, get it from your amp. Why would you buy a spring pedal? It's mm -hmm. very, you know. And then he says, you know, Bucket Brigade style chorus. And then... Usually when you turn those on, you you lose if you're really wet with those, you lose dynamic. So mm -hmm. a gain stage to make up or to boost your Princeton or whatever. He plays these Benson amps now, which are amazing. And so the idea was put all three in an enclosure and instead of foot switches to turn them on, have toggles and then a master on and off. So you can almost picture this pedal as its own bypass looper. Right. And so you make you make your preset. So Ryan uses probably right here is his. That's the sound he. Did. Yeah, so it's a big hall verb. It's a chorus that is tuned in around a CE2 or CH1 boss. It's a right, very yep. bossy, yep. bossy chorus. And then a gain stage here. So you have that. You can separately have the verb. You can, you know, maybe strum a verb chord there. Uh, sorry, switch me back on down, yeah. sorry. I was just having a quick tuning check. Yeah. 
Yeah. Or the chorus. <laughs> That almost feels flangy, which is yeah, really nice. Yeah, and yeah. then you can just, this is a beautiful push your tube amp. Yeah, so this was the VCR volume chorus reverb. Ryan loves the 80s. I love the 80s. I love the way you, I, I take it that, I might, sorry, my eyesight's not very good. It says JHS instead of VHS, yeah. right? Yeah, you're, you're on it, man. It's very cool. You're on it. It's very cool. There's a secret switch in the back. What does that do? I don't know. <laughs> it's secret. It's secret. Maybe it's not even there. Maybe you might have to buy it to find out. It's the um, psychosomatic switch. Possible. It's po I don't know. I don't really know what it does. Anyway, not talking about the secret switch anymore. Secret switch is there, maybe. Maybe it's not. Yeah, as you turn the chorus up, it gets faster with less depth. So it's a dual concentralized. That's a, if that's a wrong word, I'm sorry. It does two things at once. So as you turn the speed up, the depth goes down. If you're on this side, the depth goes up, speed goes down, which makes it flangy. Yeah. That's nice. Verb's a big hall verb. Yeah, the VCR. So collaboration seems to be a theme of some of the things we've been talking about today. We've been talking about yeah. Andy, we've been talking about Ryan. Very much. Um, you've even collaborated with other manufacturers like Steak and Eggs with mm -hmm. Keeley. Yeah. So that's obviously a key thing, uh, which is, you know, by the way of a brilliant TV link, brings us on to the Milkman. <laughs> well done. Not so bad, eh? That's brilliant. that's brilliant. If there's anyone watching from the BBC, I would love to present the morning news. <laughs> <laughs> we we saw this at NAM. Is this the one we had Josh Smith come and play on? Josh Smith did play it. He, can you give Josh a small... There we go. Actually, he deserves a large pop. <laughs> there we go. So, Josh, who I've just done a rig for, um, he was walking past, and I just sort of reached out and grabbed him. Josh, come and play this thing. And he was too polite to say no. Yeah, he just sat down and said, oh, okay, yep, plugged it in, and then it was like, oh, man. He's a pretty good guitar player. He's, you know, he's, he's right. he, he flaps around. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. Unreal. He's, he's a different level. Oh, he's, yeah, yeah. He's just unbelievable. I am not a guitar player. It's, we had that talk yesterday. There's these certain guys. He's unreal. Like, I just watch him and go, the world doesn't need me. But nobody's a guitar player compared to him, are they? No. Except, you know, the, the four other guys on the planet who are like him. I yeah. told you that the bravest thing I've ever done while we are in Germany, it were, so Josh had just finished the, the clinic, but he sat down, he's, he's playing this 60, 1960 Les Paul, uh. and Kirk Fletcher's there, and they're jamming, and then pass me a guitar, yeah, let's have a play. <laughs> And I, like Kirk. an Kirk Fletcher, so those two jamming, an, uh, and like an idiot, I sat down, <laughs> said, all right, boys, close to me on four, let's go. And, uh, you know, that was um, possibly the bravest, most stupid thing I've ever done. Was it good, but though? Did you learn anything? I learned not to jam with those two. <laughs> That's what I learned, like, ever. So... Um, Speaking of other collaborators, now the Milkman app, we had the, we had when Lee? The Captain Lee was on here, he, um, part boy. Oh yeah. <laughs> so when the Captain was on, he bought the Milkman app on, because as you know, okay. the rigs that he, he loves, and yeah. so he bought that on. Amazing sounding amplifier. And so your collaboration is with um, the maker of the Milkman yeah. amplifiers. Yeah, Tim Marcus. So uh, we've been f friends for about three years, something like that. Uh, I I travel with those, like the Milkman Creamers, the 40 Waters, uh, usually the trade shows, that's what we have. Some, oh, red, wow. some red Milkman amps, I have several other ones. Yeah, I'm just a huge fan of what he does, mm. the way they sound, the way they look, the build quality. He's like the best guy. Right. He's so down to earth, lives up in the Bay Area. He's like the guy you wish you were a little more like him. You know, when you meet him, he's just like, he's like, yeah, build amps, you know. 
and he's just he's just there, you know. He's he's great. Killer player. He plays uh, pedal steel. Mm. He's one of these pedal steel telly guys. So the whole the whole oh, idea, nice. yeah. The collaborative thing here was, he just like at some point we were discussing. I think after a Nam or something, probably about a year and a half ago. He goes, man, I just wish there was a pedal for me. What I do, and he kind of. You know, it was like draw it out on a napkin type moment or a text. You know, it was just like just a rough thing. I was like, yeah, I'll work it up for you. And so about a year later, I finally got around to breadboarding up uh, a slap echo that locked in at about 350. Mm -hmm. It let you do about two or three sounds within it. You just cannot make it do anything else. It's beautiful that way. Wow. And then a, a gain stage. He was very specific on how he wanted that to work. So... It is a leave it on all the time, enhancing beefaroni type thing. <laughs> beefaroni. Nice. That's a new buzzword. Nice, nice. Let's start that buzzword. Hashtag beefaroni. Yeah, I think there's a new pedal in there somewhere. I like that. The beefaroni. The beefaroni. Yeah, and so you need a guitar. Uh, yeah, I'll go to the telly essay for this one. Yeah, and so he, uh, we work through it. One of the things he does too, so it also works as a negative boost. Okay. It's a very, yeah, basically so like, if you oh, oh, crank your amp like and then set that up, set and it lower it and it'll pull down to clean. Yes. Um, and it's, so it's a discrete gain stage boost, a slap echo. And the, my favorite part of the echo is that the EQ is on the repeats only. So you can go from left, which is more, I think, Bucket Brigade DM2, mm -hmm. all the way to a brighter tape slap. Okay, right. And you can stack them. So. Oh, yeah. I love that. We've got another drive on there at the moment. Blues driver on? Yeah, turn it off a sec. Let's just have a listen to the... Uh... Let's just just have a listen to the the um, repeats, just okay. so we know what we're hearing. You say that's the maximum amount of delay time. Yeah. That's all you're gonna get. It's yeah. all you need. For what he wants that's the that is Tim Marcus's custom pedal and you can buy it. And if you're a telly guy, pedal still. But like rock I mean, there's so many great rock sounds in there. You yeah. put that after your drives or whatever and like that feel of just a little slap. People a lot of people are shocked when and you know, we see this with the cub or in, mm. you know, other delays. When you just leave on some space back yeah. there, yeah, there, you don't realize you're hearing it your whole life on records and things. Well, we talk about that when we did the solos thing. Yeah, let's bring the blues driver back into. Actually, actually, before we do that, sorry, let's just hear the boost. So you can turn it down, as you said. And I'm just going to risk our preamps a minute and give it a uh, give it a good. Yeah, that's awesome. That's that, that boost is it's so tempting. I want to put it in its own enclosure because it's it's really special. It's cool how it reacts with the different amps and. I Everything just that. feels, it's like the more better. Yeah. It's really great. 
Can we add some uh, blue stripes to that for a sec? Sorry, yes. we're back to it. Um, so we were, just before we went into the booth section, we were talking about having just a tiny, tiny bit of delay, which you talk about all the time, mm -hmm. don't you? Mm -hmm. pathetic my guitar is to, compared to yours. That is awesome. Um, how many yeah, I, is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a prediction that Simon behind the camera is going, uh, I'll buy that, I'll buy that, that's my, I'm having that. Wow. That that was one of the biggest surprises of, you know, cause you had this conversation, I was like, yeah, I'll whip it up for you. And then I remember just playing the breadboard and then I remember getting the prototype and like setting it on my little tester amp and playing, I was like, you know, I was surprised just how great, uh, it just kind of pulled different things out of you as a player. And, mm. Simple pedals are so great because mm. I get caught in the trap. I think everybody does yeah, yeah. of like more is more 50 knobs and I mean the color boxes are you know, you, you got to have It's too much yeah. Don't don't buy the color box mm. buy the milkman. <laughs> I Guarantee if you don't like any of my pedals, you're not gonna play them. I guarantee that <laughs> that's the JHS pedals. That's the model guarantee isn't it guarantee it. Uh, I have a question Yeah, yeah, does the boost come before or after the the boost delay? is after yeah. That is so good. Yeah. I just want to try one thing. So if we go, um, if I put like another, uh, just a normal digital delay on. That's a beautiful trick. Boy, oh boy. Yeah. That is unreal. That sounds really good. That sounds really, really, really good. Um, we oh, haven't I'm said having this one. yet, but we're using the 50 watt plexi, the 1987 XL with the loop, but we're not using the loop. And we're using, for the first time, a cheeky little addition to the that pedal shed, which Dan and I happened to, what did we find it in a roadside? Dumpster or something? Well, when we pulled over having our moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah in the fields, there. it was just there. Nobody wanted it. Anymore. I cleaned the faceplate with my tears. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Mark One reissue boogie, which sounds pretty good in conjunction with that. And the point of mentioning that was that the uh, the combination of the boosts there was just starting to push both amps into some into nice gloriousness. Yeah. So there we go. We've spoken all about the history. We've looked at some existing products and we've looked at some new pedals. Inevitably, what does the future hold for JHS? Where are you going? What what's in development? Do you have any any big goals? Yeah, uh, to keep doing it is like 
That, so that sounds easier than it is. <laughs> to keep doing it is number one. But, uh, you know, the last few years for us have been growing to the extent of, you know, we're making, you know, the 35 to 40,000 pedals a year land. And to wow. do that well and to sell that many pedals mainly through distributors working out like that is just an art that is learned i mean for us and figuring out how to make all the employees make the job awesome make mm -hmm. people happy make customers incredibly happy have the best customer service we can possibly have do innovative crazy stuff but also do classic cool stuff as mm -hmm. well the collaborative thing is fun because it's like songwriting i'm gonna strum the same six chords they're great i could write a few tunes but you get someone in there it's exciting i love that element different designers helping different artists like saying do this uh and just keep going i think um the 500s are a first kind of dipping the toe into studio land i love that land we'll see we'll see if mm. it makes sense to keep going yeah and just finishing up some things like the seesaw which we announced the volume pedal with the built-in tuner and oh, i'm excited about that lots of new stuff this year last year was like i was telling you it was just kind of a walking through quicksand of mm. like getting the 500s out and not a lot of new really nothing new last year we did the butch walker signature pedal um and we did the mike, mike campbell the calhoun mm. and this year will be a really great amazing fresh like some new things are going to come out so excited It'll be like sticking the flag on the moon a little bit. It's going to feel good. I'm having that yeah. to put man. Yeah, you are. For sure. <laughs> I think there's a cue. <laughs> it's so good. So good. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Ah, it's, it's fantastic. It's been a, a real, it's been absolutely fascinating. Cheers, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. I uh, just want to say a massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. And also a massive thank you to everyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com. They bought a garment yes. such as this. Uh, big thank you to our preferred retailers, which is in the UK is Anderson's Music, in the USA is Rift City Music, and in Australia is Pedal Empire. Pedal Empire. Hey Matt. Um, cheers guys. Don't forget to subscribe and have a fantastic day. We'll see you next week. Cheers guys. Bye. Cheer up. <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> a gig rig thing? <laughs> Go, 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 out, go.